Hi there, this is David, and welcome to our review and impression of the demo of Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. For those unaware, this is a mashup of the critically acclaimed Fire Emblem and the Dynasty Warriors series. On their own, the two franchises are extremely popular, selling millions of copies each. But how do they fare when you combine them into one game? Well, let's find out. At first, accessibility is there as you can choose your difficulty, the implementation of permadeath, English or Japanese voices, and whether or not you want to play as a male or female protagonist. It's always nice whenever you can customize the experience to your liking. And interestingly, you can choose the sex of the antagonist, Byleth, as well. From the get-go, you're thrown right into the action against the Ashen Demon Byleth, who you may recall was the hero from the first game. This threw me off guard and hooked me right from the start. After a quick tutorial battle, as well as getting your ass handed to you by Byleth, you're awakened into some sort of nether region by Arvel, your spirit guide, who can see the future, save you from death, and sarcastically guide you. But more importantly are his powers, which allow you to transform into an ashen demon yourself, Trails of Cold Steel style. Each chapter follows a pretty standard formula of story, camp exploration, and finally, battle. During the story scenes, you don't get to explore the school or anything else like that, you just kind of stand around, listen, and then make choices which can impact your affection levels with your party. Afterwards, you're sent to camp where you can purchase items, manage your equipment, look at your units, change your appearance, and further talk to your party members to improve your relationship with them. I love whenever choices actually matter. And I also love that unlike Byleth, the hero here is not a silent protagonist. The story takes place in the same setting as Three Houses, but in kind of an alternate timeline from what I could gather. The three countries begin at peace, but then things quickly go south, devolving into all-out war. And, just as in the first game, you have a choice of which class to join. Edelgard, Dimitris, or Claude's. And who you choose will give you an entirely different story, different maps, and different party members. And with three different routes, there are tons of replay value here. Battles take place on large open fields, with each screen essentially having its own boss. Defeat the boss, and then all the little underlings will die along with him. I found that the most efficient way to do this was to target the main enemy, go in guns blazing, kick his ass, and then move on to the next area, leaving your little no-name soldiers to mop up the rest of the little guys. As you explore, missions and side missions will pop up. The main missions you have to complete, while the side missions will reward you with treasures, extra experience, and gold. Now, the maps can be large and involved, but you don't have to go in on your own, because the real genius of this game is that it's actually an undercover real-time strategy game. Once battle begins, you can give your units orders to go off and defeat various commanders, and the weapon triangle is back in full force here. So you're going to want to strategically send your units out, and even pair them up together to fight some of the bosses. What I found myself doing was sending all my units over to one side of the map to kick ass and take names, while I controlled the hero and he went off as a one-man murdering machine to the other side of the map. Now, if your units do get into trouble on their own, you can switch over to control them at any time. So I would do one route, destroying everything there, then switch over to the B team to help them out. Then, a minute later, switch back on over to the main character, and then jumping back and forth continuously kept everything fresh, interesting, and a whole lot of fun. Just as in a normal Fire Emblem game, all sorts of classes are here, from monks to warriors to lancers to archers, everything that you'd normally expect, as well as the requisite weapon and magic triangles. You can use special skills in battle, but doing so lowers your weapon durability. However, don't be frightened. Your weapons will not break. They'll be restored at the next checkpoint, so you can continually use your skills to your heart's content. This is truly the demo that does not end. It took me about three and a half hours to get through it, and I could play through it two more times, choosing a different lord to see all the different branching story paths and maps. It's just the gift that keeps on giving. And you're not wasting your time on the demo either, because you can import your save progress into the main game whenever it does release on June 24th. I must say that I was hesitant of these Dynasty Warriors mishmash games, but I've become a believer. I love the Dragon Quest Heroes games, and this really does Fire Emblem proud taking a classic turn-based strategy RPG and turning it into a real-time strategy game and also an action RPG is no small task. But the development team really rose to the occasion and I can proudly say that this is worth every penny. And if this is the new way of mashing up franchises, I am here.
for it. Well, that's it for my review of Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes. What did you think of the demo? Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video or want to do here on the channel, please consider supporting me over on Patreon, heading on over to Twitch for some streaming fun, or joining the Discord to chat and hang out. The links to them all can be found in the video description. This has been David, and if you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.